Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Okay, we're going to dive right into uh, what's happening right now with Hurricane Edelia. Made landfall around 745 this morning in Keaton Beach, Florida. Strong Category 3, minimal Category 4. It went through an eyewall replacement cycle, but it essentially was a 130 mile per hour hurricane. Um, devastating storm surge, but the wind is a big issue now for inland areas, especially for northern Florida, Georgia, and parts of South Carolina. The reason it's moving so quickly, it's moving at almost 20 miles per hour. The faster these storms move, the slower it takes for the winds to calm down. So what happens is, you know, as, as storms go over land, they weaken, but if it's flying, there's not enough time for that wind to calm down. So you can bring really strong hurricane force winds well inland. Let me show you the track real quickly. Not a lot of change here. Um, in the overall track it's off to our southeast so for coastal south carolina this is going to be still a minimal hurricane strong tropical storm so you're going to see all the effects of what would be essentially a category one hurricane especially on the coast inland maybe a little bit less but still the winds will be strong i'll quickly show you that the forecast track so there it is now at two o'clock it should be in southern um, georgia It'll be at 2 a.m., which is Thursday morning, right near Charleston. So this is happening quick. Basically, by 2 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, it's near Charleston. And then by 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, it's already off the coast and moving away. But this is when it starts hammering the Outer Banks. So folks in the Outer Banks, my, my followers out there, if you're in the Pamlico Sound area, tomorrow afternoon is going to be the worst of it for you. Probably tomorrow morning and afternoon. And then by tomorrow night, it moves away from the coast completely. Let's talk about the storm surge because the storm surge is, is a significant issue with this. Um, I'm gonna move my head out of the way. We've already seen the storm surge in Florida, but for North Carolina and South Carolina, three to five inches here for the low country of South Carolina. Grand Strand to the Cape Fear area, one to three, but be on guard. This could go higher at high tide. Astronomical high tides, swells from Franklin offshore are supplying more water. So these could run higher than anticipated. The biggest threat though in the Carolinas is gonna be the Southern Pamlico Sound because we've got all this rain from this week and from the rain from the storm trying to push out of the rivers, but water's being pushed in by the surge and the wind. So that water can't go anywhere. So it spills over the banks, gets pushed into all those um, bays and canals and um, swamps and rivers, and it just overflows. There's just nowhere for the water to go. And then on the backside, Outer Banks tomorrow, sound sign flooding as the winds swing around to the northeast. So don't let your guard down for that either. In fact, if you look at some of the forecast um, surge potential, obviously pretty high in the low country. But as you go up into North Carolina, I think these are underdone a little bit here. Um, certainly some high water level in the Pamlico Sound and even areas like Emerald Isle, some of the intercoastal areas could see some significant water. And then around Ocean Isle, some pretty high water, maybe Holden Beach, higher than anticipated just because of the astronomical high tide. So let's get into the timing of all this for the rain, which is a story for folks in the Charlotte area and west. I'll focus on that now. All right, so this is the, the, the path of the storm. We'll go into the afternoon hours to see the progression of the rain in the Charlotte area and west. If we're going to see rain, it's going to be a very sharp cutoff. If you're in the mountains and foothills, you might not see any rain at all. But in Charlotte, south and east, so areas, you know, from about I-85 this way, this is where all the action is going to be. You can see the rain band sets up. And by this evening, evening rush, it's going to be wet. So the later we get into the evening and the further south and east you go, the higher the chance of rain. You see the heavy rain. Charlotte FC fans watching this, it's rain. I don't expect much lightning but it's gonna be a steady rain. So just be prepared for a soaker. It may not let up at all as we go into the evening hours, into the overnight. And look at this heavy rain band. This is where the, the flash flooding is gonna be the worst. Wherever this band right here sets up, this is gonna be more of the light moderate stuff. This is this is the flood right here. This is, this is gonna be the flooding rains right here. So if you're in this area, that's where we're gonna see the flooding. And that's over an area where it's gonna be saturated into the overnight hours. And the back edge starts to move in by, I'd say morning time at some point overnight. So this is gonna be a 12 hour window of maybe three or four this afternoon to three or four in the morning tomorrow for Charlotte, and then it's out of here. Now let's go back and, and talk about some of the other factors. There is a tornado risk, obviously along the coast. You could see South Carolina, North Carolina, there is a five to 10% chance of tornadoes. That's very common in these, so just a heads up for that. As far as rainfall amounts, um, 
again, in Charlotte, I think it's going to be a pretty tight gradient from maybe nothing to maybe three or four inches, but bigger amounts along I-95 PD area could be upwards of a foot of rain. So if you're in that area, please, 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 um, extra precautions. I'll show you the wider view. Look at that swath of heavy rain um, from the Outer Banks back through Fayetteville, Lumberton, Florence, um, Columbia, Orangeburg, all the way down, you know, to maybe south of Augusta. As far as winds are concerned, immediately in the Charlotte area, winds will not be a big deal. 30, 35, maybe 40 mile per hour gusts. But remember, the ground can get saturated, it already is in some areas, and just takes 30 mile an hour wind to bring out a tree in some of those situations where you just have, um, you know, some wet soil. As far as winds near the coast, inland areas could see 40, 50, but right on the coast, that's where you'll see the strongest winds um, overall. So that's kind of the area I'm watching for probably the worst of the winds. Um, I was going to quickly show you, let me see if I have it up here. I was going to do this in motion just so you can kind of see the movement. Let me move my head a little bit. I'm going to move my head way over here. Um, you could see the movement of the wind just for its timing. So this is going into this afternoon. And then this evening is when the winds ramp up and we'll go, you know, until this evening. Let me, let me refresh this real quick, actually. Let's see if I can't refresh this give you a little better update. So there we go, we got a little bit more data here. So um, this is a short range rapid refresh. So you're looking at almost real time data as it comes in every hour. Um, and there again, you see the strongest winds. The one thing that's interesting is the winds tomorrow could be pretty strong on the backside, even in clear skies. So it's gonna be a breezy day tomorrow, even once all of this moves out. So breaking down the timing just in the Charlotte area, again, folks on the coast, this is gonna happen at a different time and talked about that earlier in the video, but you can see the impacts and timing for us um, in the Charlotte Metro. Uh, you know, this evening is when things start to ramp up. Um, tornado threats low, but not zero. It's it's almost zero. Power outages, again, I, I hate trying to forecast these. I only can forecast them if I think it's gonna be a widespread issue. I don't expect it to be in our area. East, yes, in Charlotte, it's gonna be a sporadic tree here and there. The wind's not particularly high. The rain is our number one issue because we've seen very heavy rain in the southern part of the county in Charlotte. And this could lead to flash flooding um, in areas. And let me just quickly show you, these are the three day rainfall totals in our area. Look at some of these totals. I mean, that the, these totals over the last couple of days, two, three, four, five, six inches of rain. So if you even add one or two more inches in a short period of time, there will likely be some flooding issues in and around um, areas of Charlotte. All right, let's go back to the coast surge areas. All these blinking icons are where water is uh, high. Um, we're seeing some flooding going on. That's already includes Charleston up towards the Cape Fear area. Um, the data is not coming in really well, or I would show you. But um, again, be ready. Astronomical high tides with this system as it's moving in. And again, the impacts are going to be quick and they're going to move in quick. They're going to move out quick. So this is a current look at um, the updated forecast. I'm going to load it one more time. You can see the movement of the system. It is going to be out of here. This is an 18 hour loop. So it is absolutely flying and it should be gone by the time we get to tomorrow morning into the afternoon hours. So stay safe out there. Watch out for flash flooding. That's going to be our biggest issue in Charlotte on the coast. Please, if you have any doubts about water levels, head inland because this could be a surprise water level set up in many locations.